The next reaction that we want to talk about is how to convert alcohols to alkyl halides. Okay, so you learned about alkyl halides last semester uh, and all the various chemistries they can do, um, including one of the most important ones, which is that they can uh, be substituted, so they can undergo substitution reactions. So this is important because alcohols um, are not prone to direct substitution, but alkyl halides are. So that conversion turns out to be very useful. Now, we'll talk about a couple of ways to accomplish this uh, conversion to alkyl halides, um, but I want to uh, stress again that alcohols do not um, undergo um, the, the direct chemistry that halides do. So in this case, we are not going to do direct SN1 or SN2 on alcohols. Okay, we, we need to convert the hydroxyl group to something that, that's going to be a good leaving group in order to do these substitutions. Okay, so the first way that we'll uh, discuss is just simply using acid. All right, so we can use HX. So whatever halide we want, we just use that um, acid. So if we want a chloride, we'll use HCl. If we want a bromide, we'll use HBr. So for example, I could take this alcohol uh, and if I treat it with let's say HCl I will be able to convert it to the corresponding alkyl chloride right so the hydroxyl gets replaced with the chloride so how does this work well this is going to be an SN1 type of mechanism okay so again the the hydroxyl group on its own is not a good leaving group so we have to do something to make that group want to leave. Okay, so this is just um, just like what we did before, where in order to make the OH want to leave, we're going to protonate that oxygen. Okay, so we'll we'll pick up a proton on the hydroxyl group, and that will then give us the H2O plus. Right, so we're seeing again and again that that's going to be a group that now is reasonably happy to leave. So we can ionize at that point, okay? And that will now leave behind our carbocation. There's our carbocation. We just lost our molecule of water. And now since in this case the, you know, the acid that we're working with is HCl, the the counter ion in all of this is going to be chloride. So now the chloride can come and trap that carbocation. And there we have our alkyl chloride, okay? So uh, this is gonna work well, um, HCl, HBr, um, maybe HI. Um, uh, but as you can see, this is a mechanism that requires you again to form a carbocation. And so this is really going to require um, you know, a, a tertiary alcohol, um, alcohol, uh, and you know, if we if we try to do um, a let's say a secondary alcohol, um, we're going to generate a secondary carbocation. It may work to an extent, but even then, we're going to start to have uh, problems of the potential for carbocation rearrangements, um, and and primary uh, alcohols just aren't really going to work. Uh, by this mechanism. So um, this is okay for tertiary alcohols or other alcohols that might be very stabilized. Um, but for other alcohols, especially primary, we're going to want a different uh, method to do this. So the other uh, method is is going to be using um, reagents. So these, this is going to be uh, SN2 chemistry, but remember the OH group is not going to be a leaving group. You're not going to do direct displacement on an OH group. Um, so we need to convert the OH into a leaving group so we can do substitution chemistry. And so the reagents that we're going to do uh, that with is for chlorination, we're going to use SOCl2, which is called thionyl chloride, right? Thionyl chloride. Um, or for bromination, we're going to use PBr3, um, which is just phosphorus tribromide. Phosphor, sorry. <clears throat> Phosphorus 
try bromide. Okay, so let's start off with the, um, the thionyl chloride reaction. Okay, uh, the uh, general uh, transformation that we'll look at it would be something like a, a primary alcohol, um, or you know, it can be a secondary or tertiary too, for that matter. Although the mechanism will be different for a tertiary, um, but for a primary, SOCl2, and we are going to convert that into the primary alkyl chloride. So how does that work? Okay, here is our primary alcohol, and here is our thionyl chloride. So it's a sulfur, double bonded to oxygen, and two chloride. So it's a very, very potent electrophile. And so the alcohol can do a nucleophilic addition. And just like we saw with the POCl3 in the last video, we can displace a chloride. And after we do that, we've now converted the alcohol into this really fantastic leaving group. Okay, so we will have lost HCl. Um, and so here, now the oxygen is attached to, to this whole uh, uh, three uh, atom system, which is very electron deficient and is going to make this a, into a really fantastic leaving group. So now we're in business. So the chloride ion that, you know, probably the one that we just kicked off, uh, can now do that backside attack uh, displacement. Um, and what's going to happen here is, uh, you know, instead of just this, we could just show this leaving as SO2Cl, um, but there's actually a further driving force, which um, this, um, let me just redraw that, so Cl minus backside attack, this can kick in to form an SO double bond and in doing so kick out chloride. Okay, so what that leaves us with then is the alkyl chloride and then we get SO2 which is a gas, and then the very stable chloride ion. So that's, that's part of the massive driving force for this reaction is you get to generate a gas, a very stable uh, um, chloride ion as well. And so that's the overall process for performing an alkyl chloride. Okay, so it's an SN2 um, fundamentally, SN2 um, by and large. Um, I, I mentioned with a tertiary alcohol, you're still not going to do SN2 chemistry, so you can still form this same type of intermediate, um, but it's under, going to undergo ionization followed by trapping. So uh, SOCl2 works with tertiary alcohols, but it's going to go via an SN1 mechanism. Okay, so that's the, the chlorination. What about the bromination? Okay, so the bromination is um, essentially the same. It's only just slightly... Um, it's just only a different reagent, to be honest. Okay, so this is the PBr3 reaction. So there we're going to take an alcohol. Uh, we will treat with our PBr3 reagent, and that is going to convert to our alkyl bromide. So how does this work? Okay, so this is going to hopefully look incredibly similar to the thionyl chloride reaction. Um, and, you know, the principles are the same. So here we've got a very electron deficient phosphorus and um, there's there's a leaving group on it so the alcohol can attack the phosphorus um, kick off a BR so we'll lose a molecule of HBr when we do that and now again we have now converted our our hydroxyl group into something that by virtue of what it's attached to is a good leaving group okay so now the bromide can displace backside attack and we will now kick off um, that that whole system. So there's our alkyl bromide, and then we'll be left with um, a phosphorus byproduct. Okay, so that's the whole deal. If we want to substitute um, alcohols to alkyl chlorides, um, if it's if it's prone to form a carbocation, we can just use acid and go by an SN1 mechanism. Um, but if they're not, um, we're going to want to use uh, thionyl chloride or PBr3. Um, so that we can convert the hydroxyl into a good leaving group so we can do SN2 chemistry. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, alcohols that are prone to carbocation formation will also react with both of these. Um, also, they, they can do the SN1 type of chemistry. Now, there's one more um, uh, way that we can do substitution reactions, um, and that is to um, convert um, them to sulfonate esters. 
So we actually talked about this briefly um, in the cross-coupling section where we uh, converted a phenol into a tosylate or a triflate so that we could um, cross-couple off that oxygen. Um, and this is a general principle uh, in converting um, hydroxyl species into leaving groups is to convert them to sulfonate esters. And this actually works um, with, with alcohols really well. So this is an alternative. So for example, if I take my alcohol and I react with um, a reagent that can form a sulfonate ester, and I will just show you um, this one that we talked about before. So remember, this is the tosylate, the so-called uh, tosylate. It's a toluene sulfonyl chloride in this case. And you know this, this can do this substitution reaction um, in the presence of a little bit of base, so maybe pyridine. Um, and by the way, this, this reagent might be abbreviated TSCL, so that's tosyl chloride. Tosyl chloride is that reagent. So tosyl chloride and pyridine, and that's going to convert my alcohol now into the sulfonate ester. Okay, and so there it is drawn out in its full glory. Um, and by the way, uh, a, an appropriate abbreviation um, would be to just write OTS. So the OTS stands for that toluene sulfonate group. Okay, so why is this useful? Well, it's useful because remember, um, a sulfonic acid is a very, uh, a sulfonic acid is very acidic and that's because the sulfonate anion is really quite stable. It's got a lot of electron withdrawing groups on it. Okay. So it, that makes it acidic, but it also makes it a good leaving group. It's happy to go away with its electrons, whether it's a leaving group or a conjugate base. So in this case, we can actually now do direct um, substitution chemistry on tosylates. Okay. So I could take that product there that I just formed my O tosylate, and I could now react that with chloride ion, right? Maybe, um, you know, uh, some, some organic soluble source of chloride, but we'll just write Cl for now. Um, and that can do an SN2. So the chloride will displace the tosylate to form the alkyl chloride. Um, I can also do, it might not surprise you, uh, bromide. So I can convert a tosylate to a bromide. Okay, so that's, that's now different, fundamentally different uh, ways to get to the alkyl chlorides is via the intermediacy of the sulfonate ester as opposed to SOCl2 or PBR3. But I can also do other things too. So um, in the same way that I can displace an alkyl halide, um, I can also displace a tosylate with nucleophiles such as cyanide. So there we go. So there's our my, uh, uh, now I've converted this into a nitrile. So uh, keep in mind that the overall transformation is to go from alcohol now through the one and then two steps to the sinus. So that's a one carbon extension of my molecule. And that's actually really useful. Um, I can also do uh, a reaction that we'll uh, talk about in a bit more detail, um, which is to react with an alkoxide, such as, for example, sodium methoxide. Um, and this can then go to form an ether, an ether, okay. And so that, that can be a useful reaction too. So uh, all of these substitution reactions occur on alkyl halides, um, but they can also occur on the tosylates. And so tosylate just uh, offers an alternative um, to, uh, to uh, get to a point where you can substitute um, the, the alcohols, okay? Um, and let me just remind you one last um, conversion that is possible here, which is to take a nitrile, hydrolyze it with some uh, aqueous acid, and you can convert that into a carboxylic acid. Okay, so this is now building up a really wonderful sequence of, of taking an alcohol, doing uh, either going to the alcohol halide or to the tosylate, substituting with nitrile or with cyanide to get to the nitrile, um, and then hydrolyzing that to get to an acid. So you can convert an alcohol to an acid um, with an additional carbon involved. And that, that actually turns out to be really useful.